Hello and welcome to the episode 199 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today's main features see the Beatles busy in Abbey Road for the recording of three different albums and eight different songs. Let's start with some live actions, though. On the 18th of July 1962, the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums, performed a lunchtime and an evening concert at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. One year later, in 1963, the Beatles, now with Ringo Starr on drums, started to record their second album. Working in Abbey Road between 7 and 10.45 pm, the band recorded four songs. You really got a hold on me, nailed after seven takes and four edits and featuring George Martin on piano. Money, that's what I want, six takes and an edit. There's a devil in her heart, three takes and three of a dubs, and till there was you, three takes. The lads weren't satisfied with the work on this last song and decided to try to record it again during the next session. Fast forward to 1968. Between 2.30 and 9.30 pm, the Beatles resumed their work on Cry Baby Cry at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road, overdubbing a new lead vocal track by John Lennon, backing vocals by Paul McCartney, a new harmonium track by producer George Martin, tambourine by Ringo Starr and electric guitar by George Harrison, plus the party sound effects. This concluded the recording of the song. After that, starting at 10.30 pm, the band recorded three rehearsal versions of Helter Skelter. The song, at this time, was a bluesy jam piece incorporating long impromptu instrumental passages. The first attempt lasted 10 minutes and 40 seconds, the second 12 minutes and 35 seconds, and the third 27 minutes and 11 seconds. This latter version is the longest recording of one piece in the whole Beatles career. Beatles historian Mark Lewison campaigned hard to convince George Martin to include this version in the Anthology 3 album, despite the defects in the sound and the fact that the Beatles weren't quite in tune with each other, but then Martin and the three remaining Beatles decided that an edited-down version of the second rehearsal take was all that people could stand. Anyhow, no attempt was made to record a proper rhythm track for Helter Skelter, and the session was wrapped up at 3.30 am. And before we wrap up the episode with one more recording session, let me ask you once again to share this episode with your friends. If you liked it, that is. If you don't, feel free to contact me and share your thoughts on what can be improved. And since we are at it, please head to www.simonmas.com support. Unless this is the first episode you listen to, you know what to do. If it is, I guess the support part of the web address is a giveaway. Thank you for donating any money or any time you can afford to allow me to create even better music-related content. On the 18th of June 1969, the work on the Beatles' next album, still unnamed, started a little before 2.30 pm, when Paul McCartney had another go at recording the lead vocals for Oh Darling. He wasn't happy with this one, like he hadn't been with the previous day's effort. Anyhow, when the rest of the band arrived for the planned sessions in EMI Studio 3 until 8 pm, and in Studio 2, until 10.30 pm, they started to work again on Octopus's Garden, with Ringo recording his lead vocals and some drum fills before each chorus, completing the work on the song. The song was mixed in stereo five times, during which Ringo's vocals were manually double-tracked for the choruses and automatically double-tracked for the verses, obtaining two different effects. The song was also mixed in mono, although the final result was never used. 
Abbey Road was to be the first stereo-only album of the Beatles. This is the last story of today's episode. Tomorrow we'll talk about a TV show, a guest appearance, some real estate discussions, lots of curiosities and stories waiting for you if you fancy joining in again. But that's tomorrow. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.